In the studio with me as he is on in regular basis, Richmond Richmond's player, Dan Jackson. Talk about footy and other issues. Dan, good morning. Good morning, Neil. It's twice in two days, mate. We'll be best friends soon. Well, what would you think of the uh, Andy Dimitriou dinner last night? No, I thought it was really good. You were a highlight there with your French champagne. and your... <laughs> You get me in trouble, mate. Uh, not allowed to drink midweek, unfortunately, but I did look in envy at everyone else there having a good time with that with that uh, particular bottle. Uh, no, it was it was really it was insightful, uh, and I thought it was very tasteful and just a good celebration from a guy that's obviously done a lot for uh, for AFL footy. Yeah, I saw you having a good chat to him. He's a very strange character, Andrew Dimitri, isn't the way? I mean, he's been leading this massive organisation, very stressful stressful job, and just sort of wanders along. He's very relaxed sort of his character. Yeah, I've had a few chats with him over the years, but uh, I can't remember who it was that told the story a while ago how he's very strict at getting out for his family time. He'll knock off at 5 or 5.30, work like a dog when he's there, but then family time is family time. I think that's a great perspective for people considering you know, he's the CEO of a very, very high, powerful organisation within Australia, which would could all consume you, and he's got that good uh, work-life balance. Lee Matthews was there, and uh, Andrew Dimitri says he's still frightened of Lee Matthews because he wiped him out in a game when he was playing for North, and they, in fact, used footage of that. Jeez, it, oh, it hurt. I'd never seen that. That just looked like another standard Lee hit. I tell you what, but what would that get these days in today's new law? That's a good point. He'd be rubbed out, wouldn't he? All right. Well, he'd get eight weeks, I reckon, Would with the bumps that we go for now. He wouldn't have played too many games, Lee Matthews, if the law had changed. <laughs> I've seen him do many things like that. We're going to talk about the business of football uh, in a moment. But I noticed Yarra Council uh, last night voted uh, to support the idea of Jack Dyer Street in Richmond. What about Dan Jackson Boulevard? <laughs> I've got a bit of work to do, I think, mate. Although I was thinking, and uh, we were chatting about that earlier, that I went to Tommy Appy's funeral the other week. You know, and Jack Dyer obviously had a real influence on the field. I'm not sure so much about off before my time, well, before my time. But sitting at Tommy Appy's funeral and hearing about all the things that he'd done after his football playing career, and even he said he wasn't a great footballer, but obviously a very, very successful and, and great coach. But uh, the stories that his grandkids told and, and everyone else about the things that he'd done um, up until his death were amazing. So I'd love to see a Tommy Hafey Street at some stage. Mm. Yeah, we've been talking about a statue too. It's interesting. I, I, we were talking to Robert Domenico last night. He says Yabby Jeans, Alan Jeans at Hawthorne, really changed his life. Uh, Kevin Sheedy, Kevin Bartlett. I was talking to Sheeds last night. They both say that uh, Tommy Hafey influenced their lives. In fact, Kevin Sheedy's brother... Uh, father died and Tommy stepped in as a father figure. Could that happen in modern football, do you reckon? I, I, I sort of can't see it. It's almost too professional for that now, to, to have that personal relationship. It is, but the thing is, every club and every coach, every player is that professional. There's very little room or scope to gain a competitive advantage from being professional anymore. You can spend a little bit more money. I think that you get the best coaches get the most out of their players from their relationships. And so Tommy Hafer heard stories about at Christmas would ring every one of his players and he'd do that lunch for all these past players once a year and, and foot the bill himself. You know, I see great coaches now have very good rapport with their players and therefore the players want to really put themselves on the line to get the job done. I think So I think it really can play a part in successful teams and cultures. Time!